Namaste. Today we are traveling a bit down south to India and taking on the role of Babur, founder of the Mughal Empire and direct grandson of Genghis Khan and Timur. Big shoes to fill and he started his quest at only 14 years old. Babur's journey starts in the dead of the night when his mom, whose name I won't even try to pronounce, finds out a plot by his uncles to assassinate him so he can take the throne in Samarkand, the capital of Persia. We must defend the heroes and the fortified tower until dawn. Attacks coming from everywhere, but our small camp holds ground well. We survive until dawn and oh, wow, it actually turns to day. This is awesome. A town center becomes ours and we get villagers and new objectives. Destroying three Samarkand castles and visiting Timurid nobles. Tariq Hai is the first to be visited and to join our side he requests 10 white horses. I find three almost immediately on a cliff and send them to Tariq Hai. Some Uzbek soldiers lurk between me and a noble, so I deal with them. Hmm, this horse seems a bit brownish, but it's still white to me, it should work. Kasim is not being that great of a buddy, but he pointed to where I can find traps, and I appreciate the gesture. Okay, I guess it had to be white horses for the princess. Cool mechanic though. Like, the horses are right next to their walls, how do they not see it? We move to deal with the Uzbeks hiding traps, and once the tower falls, we are gifted traps. We meet yet another noble, Kilan this time, who asks us for a relic. Nah, 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 I'm not falling for this again, this is not a white horse. Unsurprisingly, the relic in question was right next to Kilan, although it is protected this time. Three more horses found, should be enough for Taghai. Really? Do you have to go only after my villagers? The Timurids are very aggressive here, but the economy is strong and we can push back. Monk on the way to the relic, escorted by the cavalry. The last horses I found were abducted, but I find two more almost inside Targhai's camp. We delivered the relic to Killen, much to his appreciation. And almost instantly after, the last horse arrives, and now all nobles are on my side against the Timurids. And they are not kidding around. Gates now and they are going straight into Samarkand. I get foam and start marching towards the first castle. And the traps down it quickly and without any issues. Somehow that converts half the city to be mine. We continue the march into the city and the traps get to work again on the second castle, which doesn't stand much of a chance. Another big chunk of the city becomes Babur's and the troops turn to the last standing castle. But that doesn't last either and Samarkand is finally ours. Alas, a final objective. The Uzbek army now wants to fight us. Not a problem, all troops move north, let's deal with them. The army is split in two for maximum leveling powers, and one by one their military buildings succumb to the swarm of bloodthirsty Kashyyyks and cavalry archers. As we stumble upon their castle, I send everyone to attack it, as it should be strong enough for it, right? This is taking forever, send in the traps. The castle falls and we continue pummeling everything to the ground. The fantasy moves strong and cross the river to their final stand, and their town center turns to dust by the Kashyyyks, and in the very long first mission in 1 hour, 4 minutes and 8 seconds. After capturing Samarkand, Babur fell into a long-lasting siege put by the Timurids, and had to run away and hide with some goat farmers in the desert. After chilling for some days in the desert, he decides to go seek out his uncle in Herat for help. The Uzbeks await for us by the river, but it's no big issue and we continue our way to Herat. Oh cool, camels! I saw them the other day in the zoo. They are massive. We arrive in Herat and apparently uncle died of some disease and they task us with dealing with the Uzbek problem outside of the gates. We are given a decent sized camp and start working towards amassing an army. Apparently we are getting paid by the head and brick taken from their buildings. Cool. Herat, which now is a person, not a building, tells us to go talk to the elephant tamer down south for siege tips. We send a unit there to chat and they ask for 300 gold in order to tell us how to train elephants. Need to build a market first. Problem solved and now we have siege elephants. Now wanting to waste time, I send the army I have to attack the certain Uzbeks. Kabul seems cool and wants an alliance, so we don't fight in the future. Alright, foreshadowing much? A slap fight starts against green and we retreat a bit to wait for reinforcements. Mother of God, what is the price per head? We come back with elephants now. They will pay dearly for minding their own business close to me. Attack starts as well as always, with Babur being the first to fall. The elephants wreak havoc through the town and move towards the town center. We kill most of everyone and everything, but they still fight to build new buildings. I then find a hidden town center and order the elephants to attack it. 
After leveling most of everything around green, they give up and we start moving towards the northern Uzbeks. Kabul completes the dickhead prophecy and switch aside. Guess I'll have to plow my way to their monument just to teach a lesson. The army arrives under fire from the castles and archers. After that's dealt with, we torch everything on the way to their town center and the elephants get to work. With everything almost back to nature's original state, Sian surrenders and we make way to Kabul. Holy shit, could look packs a punch. As we approach Kabul, I am greeted by my old nemesis, the gates. And then another set of gates. And guess what? Another gate. And as we march inside Kabul with only elephants, the city falls to us. And in the second chapter of Babur's story, and 45 minutes and 54 seconds. The name of this mission gives me nightmares from Genghis Khan's campaign. But unlike that flaming spiked shit show, we must bully the Indian tribes around the mountains into giving us all their gold. Some Afghans are just waiting to attack us from behind, so we attack first. While scouting for more sneaky Afghans, we cross paths with Yusufzai, who offers allegiance if we clear his quarry up north. The army makes way there and start dealing with yellow, but not focusing on scorpions is stupid, and I am required to come back later. Or now, there's only three units left. Yusuf is excited to join Babur and equips his pitchfork. We start raising what's around our camp and find out monasteries are worth 400 gold. Very nice. Yalandhar gets too cocky and attacks me with six scouts. <sighs> the gold gang topples a market. 600 more to the bank. Yusuf is loyal and obedient, and we send him to attack Yalandhar since they attacked us first. Lahore has some buildings unprotected, which makes for great fun for the troops. We reach Imperial Age and the elephants are coming in hot. Yalandhar starts feeling the wrath of Babur, and I know I didn't have to go for a full wipe of them, but they started it. Sadly, their castle doesn't give gold when it's destroyed. Nor does the town center. Luckily, the university does somehow, so this wasn't a complete waste of time. Almost half of the gold needed accumulated, and we march north to check what's up there. Once we deal with the hostiles, we come across an avalanche, and everyone is just dying to know what's behind it. So I have to bring four elephants to clear the path. Yalandhar strikes again. When will they ever learn? More buildings dropping everywhere, and our quest to become the Scrooge McDuck of India advance as well. Avalanche cleared, time to find out what's behind it. Finally, a sensical hermit, the guys from Genghis Khan could take notes. We find more unprotected riches, and we start fighting it. Only 25% of the safe missing. The hermits decide to send their friends to help out, and we now have Mangatais joining the party. I don't think alerting the soldiers will do you much, sweetheart. It feels a bit wrong murdering merchants for 10 gold each. With less than 400 left of the gold, we run straight into Sian's capital to find the money, and the monastery becomes the final target. And with that falling, Babur and his troops cheer with cider the decent time of 55 minutes and 42 seconds. I didn't really pay attention to the story here, but from what I've gathered, Babur was playing chess with the leader of the Delhi Sultanate, Lodi, and pulled a move that pissed him off. And instead of apologizing, he laughed. So now Lodi is coming after us, but he's a cocky little shit and decided to give us almost a half hour head start. Big mistake. The Ottomans are our friends here, and by clearing the path from the towers, they will supply the battlefield with cannons, so we make that top priority. I have no idea what caravans rise are used for, but I'll plop one down here. Lodi has two allies close to him, Alam and Daulat Khan, so we must convert or kill them to ease the pressure on us. Road cleared, and the Ottomans start their gunpowder trade. It's assassination time! We ignore everything on the road to Daulat Khan, and on a suicide mission, kill him while his army watches. First general done. We move to Alam with all the golems I could train. This countdown really stressed me out. We again ignore everything on the way, and run towards the general. He survives the assassination attempt just with a sliver of his health left. The second attempt won't make this mistake. They struggle to get near him, but his body drops off the horse, and we have two Lodi generals dead. Yeah, how you like that, bitch? With less than 10 minutes until the attack starts, I send the army to destroy the supply stores, to weaken even further his attempt against Babur. One down, four to go. Another one drops while I wasn't paying attention. I misunderstood where the supply stores were and attack his gates, triggering the attack to start five minutes earlier. Nice. They come straight for my gold mine, and I have to scramble every unit to that area. I tried destroying another supply store, but that ship has sailed. We push against their army with relative ease. What's that supposed to mean? They are strong because of guns, moron. This is fucking chaos, I love it. 
The defense is going well and they managed to push further into their lines, freeing up some gold mines. Two minutes left on the clock and the panic goes to Lodi. Not so strong now, huh? Countdown ends and Lodi retreats to put on his armor because he wants to fight me himself. We push into their base and start beating everything in sight. The friendly fire of the cannons does more damage than their units. We send all we have and the traps work on their military buildings. Suddenly Lodi appears to fight and I send everyone after him. But they have a lot of units and I have to retreat a bit. As we march another time, Lodi is spotted and everyone rushes to him. But the fucker runs away. Stop running! God damn it, he's looting us straight into the city! I manage to push him out, but I still need a better strategy because he keeps fleeing. Cavalry archers seem to be the solution and Lodi finally dies. And with him, so does the Delhi Sultanate. And the Battle of Panipat is over in 1 hour, 9 minutes and 13 seconds. The final part of Babur's saga starts, where we must either destroy both Rajput kingdoms or build a wonder. And since wonders are for wimps, I choose total annihilation. I started playing this some hours ago, but my computer was feeling sassy and crashed, so I had to restart. But at least this time I know where the villages I have to fix are, and send my villagers straight away there. Right away we also meet some mercenaries from Purbia, and they ask for a thousand gold in order to join the fight. The map unlocks the four villagers that need restoring, and I send a third villager to do so. The first village is fixed and join Babur's side, and a second one right after. The Rajputs seem angry and start moving my way to fight. Third village fixed, only one left in the north of the map. And the tower killed my villager, damn it. Okay, calm down Mr. Purbia, gold doesn't grow on trees. The Portuguese are here? Alright, scrap the original plan, Portugal dies first. I quench Purbia's thirst for Indian gold, and they join Babur. Amber attacks, but we are able to hold ground, and it's time for the elephant rams. I bully Amber a bit, just so they are aware I can dish too. The final village gets fixed, and we have full control of the east of the map. The camels get a bit too excited about the bully, and push it under Amber's town center. Elephants ready, and we march toward the colonizer fuckface in the south. And they send another army along, just in case. Because the only target is the Feitoria in the center, the siege units concentrate heavy fire on it, while the rest defends against the Portuguese gunpowder. The Feitoria is no more, and the Portuguese lost yet another colony. Honestly, the worst colonial power, and before anyone complains, I am Brazilian. I am allowed to shit on the abusive negligent father of my land. No time to waste, and I run towards Mewar up north, and we start pounding at his defenses. Sadly, I didn't focus fire on the castle, and the elephants got killed before it. Not a problem as another army is already on its way, and the castle fall to the bombards, as well as the town center, and Mewar is no more. Another batch of camels and bombards straight out of the oven, and we march towards Zember. Thank you for opening the door, Mr. Treb. The camels swarm the city of Amber while the cannons roar at the castle. They stand no chance. Town center and castle done, time to move further into the city. I am even sending the gold for moral support. One town center left, and now zero. Amber falls to the camel storm, and the Rajputs are a thing of the past, ending the final scenario of Babur in a very decent 53 minutes and 7 seconds. Total runtime: 4 hours, 48 minutes and 4 seconds. I feel like this was a very good time. For some reason I can't bring myself to be fully into the story of the southern Asian civilizations, so I subconsciously rushed every objective. Regardless of that, really cool story from what I've gathered. As Babur went into power at only 14 years old, I was still eating glue at that age. Also, huge shout out to that dawn transition in the first mission. It was something else to see the game change the day cycle, and I wish it was part of the game. Anyways, a lot of you have mentioned this is not really a speedrun, and I am not fast enough. And this is probably the first time I don't hear that I finish too fast. So thanks guys, it means a lot to me. Partial time stands at 44 hours, 29 minutes and 49 seconds. Adding these numbers together takes as much time as playing the game. Start boiling water for the pasta, and vote for the most incompetent politician available, cause we're going to Italy. Maybe very old Italy.